Ayan, magandang gabi po sa ating lahat. Good evening. Welcome to our 2020 Mid-Year Prayer and Fasting. We are currently on a series of prayer meetings from tonight until first day where we are gathering together online to seek God through His Word, to pray together about some specific prayer points. And for tonight, we're actually praying for our nation. Pagpapray po natin yung bansa natin, but in particular, the leadership of our nation. But before we even go there, I just felt like as we go along with our fasting, I feel like there is a confrontation in our hearts that's being done by God. And tonight, we're going to seek God through His Word. But may I ask everyone to just be expectant, to just be in the posture of really starting a conversation with God and receiving a lot from Him tonight. Not just during our prayer meetings, no? not just tonight, but also throughout the duration of the fast. Just come to God with a huge expectation. Alam nyo po, there is no magic that happens during prayer and fasting. But to the degree that we are expectant and excited when we come to God to encounter Him, it's the degree that He will faithfully meet us and encounter us. So as we confront ourselves with the Word of God tonight, May we just approach Him with a high expectation. Can I lead you into the reading of the Word of God as we start tonight? We're gonna be reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 6 to 10. Okay, you may get your Bible. I believe there's power as we read the Word of God together wherever you are. Again, that's 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 6 to 10. Let me read starting from verse 6. It says here, For God who said, The light shine out of darkness has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. We are afflicted in every way but not crushed, perplexed but not driven to despair, persecuted but not forsaken, struck down but not destroyed. Always carry in the body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. Can I just lead you in prayer? Father, I thank you for more than our heart and our desire to seek you and encounter you. It is your desire to reveal yourself to us and make known to us, Lord God, your paths, your ways, your thoughts. And I thank you, Lord God. I pray that you remove any bl uh, blinders from our eyes that prevents us from seeing. You remove any ear cuffs that prevents us from hearing and listening to you. Just make our hearts a fertile ground ready to be sown by your word, ready to be planted with the thoughts that you have for us. We honor you as we seek you tonight. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. The text that we have read is about Paul being scrutinized by the Corinthian church. He's receiving criticism from the Christians in the church of Corinth. What happened was there are new religious leaders in Corinth who are good at speaking, well-educated, and they are living what seems to be abundant lives free of troubles. The people started comparing Paul from these leaders. They started looking down on Paul and his validity as a minister of the gospel. They are questioning Paul. And the majority of the comparison would focus on what? Paul being prone to suffering. We know that Paul was in prison. He always goes through persecution. He's prone to suffering. And the people is thinking that Paul must be less blessed or less favored by God with all of the opposition he is receiving in his ministry. Okay? Now, taking the topic of leadership and ministry aside, isn't that something that we all can relate to? Sometimes when we are struck with problems, do we have that feeling of being less blessed or being less favored than others? Or maybe you are more concerned about what people will see in your life. You become concerned about what people would think if you go through suffering. They would think that your faith is dead, that your belief is dead. They will see that you're not having a good life as you walk in your Christian life. Diba? We are concerned about that. And on the scriptures, this is what's amazing about this. We will see that Paul is secured. He is secured enough not to be concerned about the comparisons people are making about him. But what he is more concerned about is that 
how this comparisons and looking down on him reveals the people's strong perception about what? About suffering, about problems and troubles. And alam niyo po, this wrong perception about sufferings, problems, troubles, it ultimately points to a wrong understanding of the gospel and the grace of God. This is what Paul is concerned about. That's why he is addressing it in the text that we have just read. In Paul's perspective, the criticisms he received reveals more about those people who is criticizing him than himself. And it revealed that these people has not fully grasped and understood the amazing, gra the amazing grace of God alone. Okay? This brings us now to the confrontation that we need to make. Ito yung gagawin nating pagko-confront in our hearts with God tonight. We encountered a lot during the first half of the year. Yes? We could easily identify all of those things that has happened as suffering, troubles, and problems. We are now at the midpoint of the year and we are gradually recovering our faith and believing again that the next half of this year, it will be different. But I believe that there were some belief that we have about the grace of God that was shaken during the last six months and they need to be confronted. If you would check and compare, if you would be honest to yourself and you would observe and look back, let me ask you this question. How has your understanding of God's grace changed from what it is at the beginning of the year into what it is today? If you began the year with such great faith that God's amazing grace will uh, really take you to amazing things this year, how has it changed after facing the consequences of the Taal eruption of the COVID-19 pandemic? How we felt that we are less blessed? How we felt that we are less favored? How we felt less of a child of God after everything that we have lost so far, after all the setbacks we have experienced so far? Or do you feel that your faith right now is paralyzed from believing again in God's grace because some of your expectations were not met and you now encounter a fear of not having uh, uh, expectations being met again as you believe in God again? This is the confrontation we are doing today. I believe part of this mid-year prayer and fasting is God mending and catering to some injuries that our faith was, uh, yun, has been afflicted with because of the troubles that has happened. Somehow, our faith has weakened, our belief about God's grace has been afflicted, has been endured. And I believe God is in the business of healing those parts in, of our belief in Him, of our heart. I pray that you will entertain this confrontation and allow God to restore us to a right understanding of His amazing grace. Okay? This is Paul's admonishment to the Corinthian church in the area that we have read in the text. He opened up with making a remarkable statement in verse 6. He said in verse 6, For God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Paul was reminding the church that first of all, we must remember that our God is a God who turns darkness into light. Remember that. And so, in the middle of the darkness and uncertainty and disbelief, even in our hearts, He can shine a light just as when He did when He revealed Himself to us in Jesus Christ. Even if there is no source of light, God can shine a light. We must remember that in the beginning, our hearts are away from God. Tandaan natin, no? Before we have encountered Jesus Christ, there's nothing in our hearts that would make us believe in Jesus or in God. But we saw that God's grace shed light, shone a light about Him in the sea of void and nothingness in our hearts and has shown to us His amazing grace through Jesus Christ. In the beginning, we expect nothing from God. In the beginning, we deserve nothing from Him but punishment. But it was He who has initiated faith. It was He who has uh, really made us understand this amazing grace that He has laid down for us. I feel that we just need to be reminded that we have received the revelation of God's saving grace. Despite of our wickedness and our sinfulness, 
And uh, that is the most amazing grace in itself. Alright? Um, more than, alam mo yun, before going to believing about our faith goals, believing about greater things happening in our lives, let us be reminded the greatest, that the greatest form of God's amazing grace happened when at the time that we have our backs turned against God, He has pursued us. He has shown the light of His grace in our hearts. And this is the amazing grace in itself. And if it's true that that was what happened that time when we knew God, we, when, we, when we don't know God yet, I believe it's also true that regardless of whatever is in our hearts right now, whatever is the condition of our hearts right now, God can reveal His amazing grace to us. You may have been tired in believing because of a lot of expectations that you have that has been failed or has not been met. Things didn't go your plan or your way. You may have lost your hope, but God can and He will reveal His grace to you even in your point of nothingness. And Paul went on and established this point even further in verse 7 where he said, But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. Making an inference from the last verse, the treasure Paul is mentioning here is none other than the grace of God. Truly, it is like a treasure. When we found it, when it is revealed to us by God, His grace, you will see how high its worth is. You will say that, I don't deserve this. Kaya yung may kanta na scandal of grace, di ba? Kasi, it's a scandal to really be a recipient of grace despite our weakness and our wickedness. And this treasure, according to Paul, sabi niya, it's in jars of clay. Interestingly, this jars of clay refers to none other than us. Ako, ikaw, katabi mo. Tayo po ay mga jars of clay, tayo po ay mga palayok. <laughs> and this jars of clay, um, alam mo yun, what's amazing is... Uh, Jars of clay, it may come in different forms. Iba-iba ng laki. Yung iba sa atin, palayok. Yung iba sa atin, yung pinaglulutuan, pinagsis, pinaglulutuan ng pinangat, di ba, natulingan, yung mga ganyan. Yung iba sa atin, banga. Ayan, sino bang banga dyan? This jars of clay comes in different forms, sizes, may decoration, pwedeng wala. But what's similar among all of the jars of clay is that they are all breakable. They are all fragile. Aren't we so similar to jars of clay? Okay? We came from different social statuses. We came having different capabilities and limitations. But what is similar among us is that none of us are invulnerable. Lahat po tayo ay prone sa danger. Kitang-kita po natin yan na lahat po tayo talaga naapektuhan ng COVID-19 and its implication in one way or the other. Okay? Talagang walang nakatakas doon. But what is more important to note more than that is that this jars of clay contains the treasure or the grace of God. Ibig sabihin pala, there lies the surpassing power inside those jars of clay. What Paul is saying that uh, in light of their criticism about Paul, what they see on the external, Paul is exhorting for the church to not look at what is seen, the external, the outside things, but to what is unseen, the treasure, the power, the grace that is inside. Paul's interjection is that the power for salvation and the amazing grace of God remains in us despite how fragile we prove to be because of the troubles, despite of how broken you may feel you are right now. The grace of God, that treasure, remains in us. And this also implies that we can never boast of the power that is not from us. Alam yun? Mer- Mas ating pwedeng magmayabang na, ah, masaya ako ngayon, boy ako ngayon, talagang fulfilled yung life ko, taas pa rin ang faith ko, kahit nagkaroon ng pandemic. You can never boast about that. It's only backed by the grace of God. Nor can we, nor do we not elevate or disqualify a person for the power that is from God. Truly, as long as the power of God's amazing grace is inside a person, that's something that we must look into and not the things of the outside. That's why all glory and honor will be naturally pointed to God. For what is normal is hindi natin masurvive itong mga bagay na to. But because of His grace, we got through the troubles. We went, we were able to go through. 
this. It's all by the grace of God. Despite our limitations, the proof that uh, the fact that um, we are here today, it's the proof that God's grace is with us. It is just encouraging to note that regardless of wherever we are in our lives right now, God can reveal His amazing grace that is deposited in us. As we go through uh, the next half of the year, some of us may have been on the on the stage of starting again from nothing some of us have setbacks that we need to make up for regardless of where you are right now this is an encouragement from the word that god's grace is more than available for us to tap into today kahit nasan ka man kapatid after this dun sa binasa nating verse 7 paul continued to strengthen this point pinaon niya pa tong point na to by stating some observations and declarations Kung paano tayo nabubuhay in light of suffering, okay? This brings us to verses 8 and 9. Sabi doon, We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not driven to despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. It is encouraging to dissect this verse, but to put things simply, Paul is claiming that we are not gonna live lives free of problems, but we're gonna live lives indestructible by problems. Sabi nga ng isang kataga, a Christian life is not a storm-free life, but rather a storm-proof one. So sinabi ni Paul doon, we are uh, alam yun, afflicted. Ibig sabihin, we are being pressured in every way. But we are not crushed. Ibig sabihin, hindi, hindi tayo natudurog into pieces. We can be pressured but not crushed. We are perplexed. We are put in a position where there seems to be no way out. Nagkakaroon tayo ng ganun, ano mga moments na, anong solusyon dito, Lord? Pero we're never in despair or in a place or position where there actually is no way out. God always provides a way out because He's the way maker. We, are, we find ourselves in the position of persecution where we are being pursued with this hostility. We are being mocked for our faith. But we are not forsaken. We are not completely abandoned in the middle of danger. And lastly, we are being struck down. We might receive blows from the enemy, from the world, from the calamity, but we can never be destroyed or be defeated. Yun yung sinasabi ni Paul dito. As long as we are in this world, we will be afflicted, perplexed, persecuted, and struck down. Kasi sabi ni Jesus nga, yung promise niya, in this world you will have troubles, di ba? But in Christ, we will never be crushed, driven to despair, forsaken, or destroyed because in this amazing grace that we have, as the word said, greater is he who lives in us than he who lives in the world. And as I start to end, my good news to you is that if you have experienced any of this for the past six months, these afflictions, these persecutions, this being blow, um, alam mo yun, this uh, blows that you have received, you're struck down, you have been sick, you have lost your job, you have lost something, an opportunity to step up in your career or a business opportunity. You have uh, seen your plans being de devastated sa mga student dito, yung mga target yung campus or university, parang nawala na yung, ano, yung path para doon kayo pumasok. Or any kind of affliction at all that you have experienced. Yet you are here today, listening to this message, having experienced all of that. Let me say that you made it here today. But by the grace of God alone, but by His amazing grace alone. And this is an evidence that His grace has been really at work in your life. Because who are we to be spared by the pandemic? Who are we to not starve and have nothing to eat? Who are we not to lose many things? As jars of clay, we are all prone to being destroyed. But because of God's amazing grace in us, we are not destroyed. We are strengthened. We are made firm. We are made unshakable, undestructible, and this is what it means to be edified by the grace of God. All throughout those things, it's God's grace, His amazing grace that edifies us. So regardless of whatever trouble we experience, God can edify us with His amazing grace. Are you afraid that things might go wrong again? That's why you are paralyzed to believe again. Let me say that Troubles are already a natural part of our lives. It's a new normal. As, as soon as you, know, I mean, you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's a promise that we will go through troubles. It's a new normal. It just comes in different form. 
Alam mo yun? Iba't iba tayo nung pinagdadaanan. But regardless of that, we are confident that we have God's grace to edify us, to strengthen us. Hence, we can keep going. Hence, we can keep keep pursuing God's purposes for our lives. We can keep running the race. We can keep enduring, knowing this. And finally, in verse 10, Paul mentioned, Always carrying in the body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. Paul is calling us to remember that the death of Jesus was for the sake of us having his life in our bodies. There are two implications to this. First, wherever we go, whenever we go through suffering, character is being produced in us. Character of Christ is being more evident and seen in our lives. Christ-likeness. Secondly, and I believe this is more rewarding for me, even if anything is taken away from us, even our lives itself, may it be taken away, if, even if it's taken away by this world from us. Alam nyo, kahit anong mawala sa atin, we are just getting closer and closer to the reality that in the finished work of Christ, we find our completion. We find everything our need. Even for eternity, even our eternal life is secured in Christ. With this, I am just given a brand new lens on how to look at what happened at the first half of the year. It made sense to me that in every suffering we experience, we receive far greater than what we lose by God's amazing grace. We become more like Christ. We get, we get to taste God's grace and the life to the full that He has promised us to a greater degree. And because of this, we can believe again and not look back. Be in faith again and not intimidated by the dangers that is coming. Pursue God's purposes and not be conscious about the problems, but be conscious about the promise of our God for us. As we go through the prayer and fasting, I know that we will be looking forward, but may we offer to God the worship, the honor, and glory for everything that He has done for us for the last six months. For truly, He has given us more than what this world has taken away from us. Let me just end by praying for all of us. Father, thank you for confronting us tonight with your word. Thank you for really more than what we have talked about, what we have really seen from your text. In our individual hearts, you have been pointing out wounds that we have about our faith in you, our belief in you, that you're starting to really mend with your gentle love, with your compassionate heart. You're starting to really talk to us uh, about the, these areas, Lord God, where we need to really reconcile our faith in you. Thank you, God, for ju during this prayer and fasting, you're going to speak to us in a greater degree. You're going to be so personal to us as to really uh, lead us through a journey of knowing what has happened, how has our faith weakened, how has our belief in you really shaken, and you're going to encounter and confront us at each of those. And we're going to come out of the season of prayer and fasting, having a renewed faith in your amazing grace that will be the foundation of what will what we will accomplish for you as we pursue God your purposes for us at the next coming half of the year. Salamat Panginoon. We expect none other than greater things because this is what your amazing grace offers us. Salamat O Dios. May we be honored and glorified to die in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Okay, we're gonna move to our prayer time tonight. We're going to pray for our nation. And just like what we have talked about, may we be compelled by God's amazing grace to be in faith and believe that greater things are yet to come and they are still to be done in our nation despite of everything that's happened politically, economically, and even in our government despite of all of those things. Because God's amazing grace is at work in His sons and daughters, we can be in great faith again. Let's go and really pray about these things.